Welcome to the new season of the Live Your Spa Life Show. The Spa and Spa Life stands for Seek Power Always, that divine power within you to do what you're here to do. The theme for this season is Freedom Fighter. Amazing people like you share ways to ensure your freedom physically, financially, spiritually, and in your relationships to create a world-class life. In these times of uncertainty, it's time for you to move past the distractions and start trusting yourself more through your God-given knowingness. No one truly knows better what's best for you than you. In this season, you'll have plenty of examples of people choosing their best life and giving a voice of freedom to those who are also looking to have their best life. Thank you for sharing your precious time with us and being part of the Live Your Spa Life conversation. With us today is Chelsea Klein, a San Diego native, a former D1 volleyball player at the University of Texas at Austin, and a survivor. And I'd like to also add more of a thriver. So Chelsea, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Diane. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Well, I have not uh, ran into too many San Diego natives. I myself is one. My family's been here since the 1920s. So I think that's awesome that uh, we're here. So let's start at the beginning. Like, uh, how long has your family been in San Diego and what high school did you go to? Yeah, that's um, that's amazing. You know, it's funny. I, I like to think that we're called unicorns uh, because there's not many of us, not very well known, you know, San Diegans. But so I have... Um, currently three generations. So my mom is also born and raised in San Diego. She went to Grossmont High School. Um, she's in her 60s now. So I'm not exactly sure when she graduated, but we won't do the math. And then my two older sisters and I, we um, were also born and raised here. I went to Westview High School out in Rancho Penasquitas. And then my two older sisters actually went to Mount Carmel High School. So I was the first graduating class all the way through Westview opened up my freshman year. So that's why my parents sent me to Westview. And then um, one of my sisters that lives here, she's, uh, you know, married with kids and my nieces go to Steel Canyon High School. So we have quite the the generation of uh, natives. That's awesome. I love hearing that. I've got, I have four grandchildren, so we're actually on six generations here. And I went to uni, um, but my daughters went to Scripps Ranch High. So oh, yeah. all kind of all kind of local in the area. Yeah, here, so. yeah. I had a lot of friends that went to Scripps Ranch. So fun. It's good stuff. So D1 volleyball, impressive. Yeah. I played volleyball in high school, and there's a lot of competition out in the world there. Um, how did uh, volleyball become your sport? And, you know, I I actually have my grandson who wants to play like in the NBA and basketball. So when you like are passionate about your sport, yeah. um, how does that distinguish how you like, I don't know, not, I, I'm not even going to say balance because I don't even know balance is the word there, but when you're really going for a sport, uh, just, you know, how does that fit in with just like social life and also studies? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question. So I, Growing up, I actually was a competitive gymnast up until seventh grade. So I never really had any other experience, you know, to any other sports. I was just all about gymnastics, actually wanted to go to the Olympics. I was supposed to go, I was training for 2008 to go to the Olympics. And I uh, ended up breaking my back when I was in seventh grade, which caused me to have to stop doing gymnastics. And that's what tra transitioned me into volleyball. My oldest sister, um, well, not my, my middle sister, she played volleyball at Mount Carmel. So she played volleyball in high school. And I was, as the youngest child, whenever I didn't have any sports going on, I was dragged to my older sister's sporting events. And so one day I was dragged to her volleyball practice she was taking a private lesson. And because I was done doing gymnastics, I had to quit after I got hurt. And um, I decided to just jump in and mess around with my sister at her volleyball practice and seem to kind of just naturally pick it up. I mean, if you talk to the coach that I you know that trained my sister, he would say, you know, I just kind of naturally had a feel for it. Mm -hmm. And it was in at that moment that I started playing um, at Black Mountain Middle School. So we had a, you know, middle school volleyball team. And that's where I got my first kind of introduction into it and then started playing club volleyball uh, all throughout high school. And then that's when I was then recruited my senior year. So um, I just knew, you know, going into about like my junior se senior year, I, I just, I, for a lot of kids, right. After high school, 
that they're done with the sport unless they go play intramurals in college. You know, they're usually done playing that, playing that sport and they move on for academics. And I just knew that I didn't want to be done yet. Like I just had this, you know, funnel, I call it like a horse blind blinder vision that I I just wanted to keep going. You know, that was my goal. So all throughout high school, I didn't, you know, socially, I wasn't going out on the weekends and I wasn't thinking about going and hanging out with my friends. I would go to my volleyball tournaments on the weekends. I would go to practice at night. And I just had that ultimate goal of, I wanted to play in college and I needed to just make sacrifices and do what I needed to do to have that opportunity. And lo and behold, um, you know, I started getting recruited my junior year, but come senior year, the university of Texas, you know, gave me the offer of going and playing for them. And I, you know, knew I wanted a big school and their, their program is absolutely unbelievable. If you follow, follow anything about college sports, I mean, we you know, have a couple big 12 championships and things like that. And so of everything between the academics at that school, being a little bit far enough away from home, but still close enough to come back to mommy and daddy. And then just that whole experience. Um, I just knew when they came to me, I knew that was it. So. So good. Well, you know, it's interesting, like, you know, our foundations really help us prepare for a lot of different things Mm -hmm. in life. And, you know, you at at a young age um, experienced a a really personal tragedy. And I'd love for you just to share about like what happened in Mount Shasta and, Mm -hmm. you know, what that that experience was like and how it's impacted you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and it's actually this is, you know, I like to say great timing just because I just hit my two year anniversary of the accident. Um, but yeah, I mean, COVID, I think drove us all to try a lot of new things and realize that there's a new way of doing life, so to say. And, um, my boyfriend at the time, we just happened to go hiking. That was a lot of what we did during COVID, you know, when the world was shut down, what could we do that kept us active and, and out in nature. And so, uh, you know, just, a normal Saturday afternoon coming down Mount Shasta. We are at 12,000 feet. And within minutes of us turning around to come down the mountain, we realized we were trapped. We were trapped on ice. And the only way to essentially get off the mountain was two things. One, call for help and get life lighted or try to get down. And knowing him and I and Unfortunately, fortunately, but unfortunately, our competitive nature and our, you know, go-getter mentality, we we try to get down ourselves. And we uh obviously successfully or did not successfully do it. Um, he led the way, ended up falling in front of my eyes, went down the mountain, and I, you know, thank God had phone service at 12,000 feet. I was able to call 911 as he was going down. And they said, well, it's going to take four and a half hours to get a helicopter to come life flight you off this mountain. And as I'm sitting there looking down at him, all I kept thinking was, I just, I just went off. I just went off this mountain. There's no way I could just let him lie there, not knowing if he was alive or not. So I got off the phone and within, you know, seconds, I tried to get up and go down to him. And that's when I slept and slipped and fell. Um, woke up in the hospital, literally don't remember a thing until all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I'm being woken up in the hospital. I broke my leg, I dislocated my, my clavicle, um, fractured my spine, my ribs, I had hypothermia concussion. And I just, I woke up and I just said, well, where's Jeff, you know, thinking he was in the room next to me. And they said, no, honey, he didn't make it. And with that put me to sleep again. So going from a all day, every day, active lifestyle, being outdoors, hiking, working out, exercising, being an athlete to literally all of a sudden being bedridden, right? I am losing my boyfriend. Um, I had to make a decision and it was, I could either let this define me and hold me down and, you know, I could sit and and cry and weep and feel sorry, or I have to use this as an opportunity to go better my life, this new life, this second chance of life that I was given, right? I mean, I I shouldn't be here. And the rescue crew and everybody that was involved in the 
my finding and Jeff's finding and the entire mission would say that it is an absolute miracle that I'm here. And I realize that every single day, I wake up every single day with the mentality of, I have to go make the most of this. Like I'm not here, I'm not supposed to be here, but I am. And so how do I go make this second chance at life the best life possible? Yeah. So, so powerful. You know, we don't necessarily realize the, um, the miraculous things that happen around us all the time. And I think that it's, it's no coincidence that you were on, you know, Mount Shasta. I've been to that mountain. It's known for its spirituality. It's considered Mm -hmm. the home of the, of the masters, right? The ascended masters. And, you know, I think that we are guided in a lot of different ways. And I think that, that it's what we do with these things that are put in front of us mm-hmm. that allow us to make the shifts um, that we do in our life. So, you know, now having the perspective of, of those two years, um, what do you feel like, what at that pivot at time, like, you know, there's been some time that has passed now. What do you feel like, shifted for you because sometimes when tragic things happen there's kind of an awakening that happens it allows you to see life through completely different lenses it's like you can't be asleep anymore to what it is that you're here to do what kind of um ahas or knowingness has come from that moment yeah um you know there's a few things i would say a lot of people ask me you know how did you get through that how did you you know how are you so positive about the situation and um, yes, you know, I have a therapist that I have worked with. I actually worked with her before the situation, before the accident. Um, obviously my family, I'm extremely close to my family. They're all, you know, my rock and, but also my faith, right? Like just believing that. And I've always believed and the way I was raised was, you know, we have a purpose. We have a reason we have a purpose. It's we've got to go find it. We are guided. We are, um, you, there's, there's something out there for all of us. Right. And so for me, my faith is really, really what has empowered me to go make the most of this situation. Right. Like I said, it's, I could sit here and I could play the victim and because, you know, he's no longer here and my life completely changed. And maybe I'm not running a mile as fast as I used to, or, you know, what you name it, what I could essentially, you know, blame and and be negative about. But at the same time, I then think about all the blessings and blessing and disguises that have come from it. And it's on me and my decision. I'm the only one that can choose which way to go, whether I'm going to let it define me and me be the victim or me go and just make the most of what I have now. And I, I truly believe and know that my faith you know, and, and, and my eyes, you know, God who saved me, right. It's like my, my therapist hates when I use the word, I feel like I owe it to him. I don't, you don't necessarily owe it to anybody, but I do. I'm grateful for it. Right. I'm appreciative of it. I'm so thankful that I am alive, that I need to go give that to back. I need to go give back to that. And whether that's me, I ended up changing careers. I ended up, you know, I kind of joke and I say, I feel like it got my, like, my bitch back in the sense that I'm okay saying no to things now. Uh, if I am uncomfortable, if I'm physically uncomfortable, emotionally uncomfortable, you know, socially uncomfortable, I'm not going to make excuses about it anymore. I'm going to honor that. And I'm going to honor those feelings. And I'm going to be okay with the fact that if I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And so another thing that I'm, I'm grateful for, you know, of a lesson that I've learned because life's too short, right? Like, and it's cliche. And we all say that. And we all think that every day of, you know, anything can happen and kiss your loved ones goodbye every day. And, you know, make sure you say goodbye. And I love you on the phone. Like, yes, I grew up with my dad preaching that to us, but until you, unfortunately, until you go through a situation or maybe, you know, somebody, or you've lost somebody or gone through something tragically yourself, it doesn't quite hit the same. And So if there's one thing that I could do is it really is to go share that message and, and share that, that we have a decision every day, whether we want to, you know, let some negative situation hold us back and define us and, you know, get angry and upset or look at the silver lining and look at the blessing in it and then go make the most of that. Right. 
Right. Well, you know, it's such an important distinction to look at instead of something happening to you, to ha that it's happening for you, you and it allows you to look at things from a different perspective. Definitely. You know, as a former police officer, it's like, you know, each day was like you didn't know what was going to happen. But until you've actually been shot at or you've had circumstances that happened to you, you look at life differently. You see mm -hmm. things in a, in a different way. Yeah. Uh, so, Chelsea, what are you doing these days? Like what path has this turned you on? Yeah. So um, actually, during COVID, like during the time of my accident, um, I I'm, I work in medical device sales, so I actually have my scrubs on right now. Um, I was working in hospitals. I was in the OR and the IR in spinal surgeries. I was um, essentially on call, um, but with scheduled surgeries. And then you know COVID happened, and the hospitals were shut down. Well, I happened to fracture the same exact spot of my my spine. I did exactly what I did for a living. So for me, you know, I, I ended up not having to have surgery because I'm young. I didn't have to go through surgery. I was able to heal my own. And, um, Stryker was so gracious to me and they, you know, I was on disability for five months. I went through four surgeries in six months after my accident, but I went back to work after five months. And I just remember standing at the operating table and just seeing, you know, my patients lying there and, and it just to our point, right. Until you're in it, it just, it hit differently. It, it hit home. And in that moment, I just realized, you know, as much as I loved what I did and how I did feel like it was fulfilling and I was helping people's lives by, you know, going through and fixing pain in their spines, um, it just, it didn't feel like that was it for me. And so um, I changed directions. I now work in the dental industry. So I work for, um, I'm in sales for Invisalign. So I'm still, you know, in that relationship of helping and, and the medical devices, but a little bit lighter of a schedule, not living that rat race of being on call and going into hospitals. And, you know, whether it's at five o'clock in the morning or five, six, seven o'clock at night, I realized I just wanted more to a balance. You know, I wanted to go, I didn't want to live my life with a page on my hip. It was more important to me to um, you know, I got a puppy after my accident and, you know, there's just things that I've realized through this journey of my healing, because I did have that downtime of things that I just enjoy more than running around town and, you know, living my life off of a quota, right. Cause I'm in sales. So it's definitely much more balanced and I'm still changing lives through, you know, the dental aspect. Yeah. So good. You know, what I'm hearing you say is like, you're being more present to what's mm -hmm. in front of you, right. And really enjoying the moment at the time. So, you know, it's, it's so great when you look at, I mean, so many times people focus on just one area of their life, like, you know, like you mentioned like your career, but when you look at like the bigger picture about, you know, your environment and the people you spend time with and your spirituality, and when you look at all of it as a totality, you know, it really has a more, um, fulfilling aspect of it versus just doing to be doing like the things that people talk about things that they have to do versus what they get to do. Right. So, you know, when you look at that, what, um, what do you get to do these days? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm still very, um, uh, very active, right? Like I, sometimes I think about how I, I just get to walk, right? Because there was a time that I was in a wheel, I was in a wheelchair, why, you know, laying in a wheelchair for five weeks with a broken spine and broken leg and all these issues. I mean, so that is a big piece of me just being a moving right movement, whether that's just going on a walk or getting out of bed every morning, there was a time that I couldn't get out of bed by myself. Right. So, um, although there are my times that I'm, you know, I don't want to have to go work out or whatever my feeling of, you know, exercising may be, but I get to, so I do, I enjoy being active. I, you know, yoga and going on walks in the gym or, you know, I go on small hikes still. Um, you know, I, I get to go spend time with my family. I get to go to, you know, fun music festivals or, you know, sporting events, like the things that do really fulfill me. Like I, I get to go do those things. I don't, I don't like to do, or I don't do what I feel like I have to do. So again, me being able to say no to things, or maybe I meet somebody that I just don't quite feel the same energy with, or, but I don't, I'm not going to just be their friend because I want a new friend, right? Like it's, it's having those boundaries again and, and be realizing the the choice is mine. And I think that is so important because for a while, I mean, even before 
I mean, I'm in my thirties now, but you get caught in feeling like you need to do things. You have to do things to go keep up with, I don't know, whatever social media or whatever it is that we're all unfortunately just, you know, following. And, and, um, you know, I just learned that maybe I'm an old soul now, but I, if I don't want to do it, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I love that boundaries. It's so great. And, you know, it's an interesting time in the world. And, and just the timing of your accident is, you know, when the world was shutting down and people were in such fear about things and people a lot of times have fears about things that they it's like fear of the unknown. Like they don't know like what's happening. So they let it kind of affect them in a lot of different ways. And so, you know, you literally lived a situation that would be some people's like worst nightmare. It's like, especially someone who is an athlete and somebody who is like super active to have the physical, um, in some ways a setback, right. You know, to literally be like a top athlete and then to not be able to move at a certain right. point. What was your climb back from like your mindset? Was there a point where you were kind of felt like you felt defeated or hit from the mindset or were you like, hey, I'm on the ground running from the beginning? Like what was that transition? Because a lot of times, you know, how you look at things really can make a difference on, on how quickly you recover, um, how you look at the situation. Um, what was it from from the start? Yeah. Um, you know, I think when you're in the moment, right? Um, well, there's a couple, there's a word that I, I really, really adopted through this entire, these last two years, right? And it's the word grace. I mean, so much that I named my puppy Grace. Um, you, you have to, well, I mean, right immediately after the accident, I think I've always had that mindset of where there's a will, there's a way, right? I mean, I just knew that, I knew how uncomfortable I was in that wheelchair that I was determined as heck to start walking. Right. And it's kind of like what baby is like, they start walking, then they want to start jogging. Then they want to start running. And I think it's just, we talk about freedom. We talk about independence. And I was living with my parents at the time of the accident. I'm in a wheelchair and you just feel helpless. Mm -hmm. You, a part of you kind of, it's not so much that I was hopeless, but I felt helpless. I felt like, I don't like I'm, I take pride in the fact that I'm, you know, an independent woman living on my own. And the next thing you know, I'm in a wheelchair with my parents and granted, my parents are amazing, but I just had this mindset of, I just wanted that freedom again. I just wanted that independence again. And where there's a will, there's a way, but at the same time, give myself grace, right? I knew I, I could only do so much. And so I would do as much as I could to realize at that moment, when I started getting frustrated, or you know, maybe if I honestly would fall down or something would happen, it was a give myself grace moment and realize it's okay to get help though, too. Right. So, um, just having that mindset of just pushing through and again, not letting it define me. Right. I wasn't going to play the victim. I was going to do what I needed to do to get through the physical pain. And then once I got through the physical pain, or the physical hold setbacks of, you know, once I started walking again, or once I started being able to put clothes on myself because I could lift my arm after my shoulder surgery, it got to this point of now here I am too late. I was released from all medical supervision, seven months to the day of my accident. I mean, my surgeons in my recovery, in the OR and in the, in the hospitals asked me to come in and be a motivational speaker to their patients because of how quickly I was able to recover and I mean, I have no medical restrictions at all. Like I said, the only, the only physical therapy I had to do was on my leg for six weeks because I literally, you know, have a metal rod in my leg. But besides that, I mean, I'm, I'm back to running, you know, eight to 10 miles a week. I take yoga twice a week. I ride my Peloton. I lift weights, you name it. And, you know, through that journey now, even I think of how far I've come, right. That I, I almost don't have an excuse anymore. It's like, yes, I do have to give myself grace. If there's days that I wake up and maybe I'm a little, my legs a little sore, or, you know, I do have my aches and pains. Right. But to think how, how far I've come and to think that there are some people in this world that can't walk. Right. And I was once that person, it's, it's just having that, again, that mentality of give myself grace, but where there's a will, there's a way and I can do it. Right. And, um, and maybe that's the competitive athlete in me that I've always had that can't stop, won't stop. You know, you can't hold me down that independent go getter that I am, but you know, whatever it is, uh, I, I can't complain because I did it right. I did it. Like I said, seven months of the day, the doctor said, 
we love you, Chels, but hopefully we'll never have to see you again, right? Because <laughs> I just, you just get through it. You just find a way. Right, right. Well, I think that's so helpful just for our listeners because, you know, everyone goes through something, right? And it's how you look at it, whether or not you let it define you. I love the word grace. My my youngest daughter's name is Elizabeth Grace. Um, that is just uh, such a, a powerful yet beautiful word. And, you know, when you were saying that, I was thinking there's this combination of grace and grit, right? Yeah. It's like giving yourself that grace, but the grit to just keep moving things, right? Just to mm -hmm. keep moving forward. And even with some setbacks, you can always continue just to get a little bit further ahead. And it's like, it's that journey, right? It's looking yeah. to see what that is. And, you know, really being able to combine that mental, emotional, physical combination together is really something super powerful. Yeah. And I really think that we have um, a big say in our environments, you know, the people that we surround ourselves in, you know, the what the space that we live in now um and so one of the things is we we live differently one of my favorite questions to ask is that you know we experience life differently in our bedroom versus our kitchen or our office what's your favorite room in your home and why mm, that is a great question um honestly i would say my bedroom and not because i'm a big sleeper and i like to lay down i think we we all can tell that i'm a you know always going and always on the go. But I just know that when I'm in my bedroom, I have a different mentality of whether it's just me shutting off and relaxing and just being right. Being still, uh, I have trouble being still. And when I, I don't, I'm, it's funny because I don't like to sit on my couch. I don't like to necessarily like sit and watch TV. If I do that, if I sit, I'm in my bedroom, I'm in bed. That to me is my place of quiet and shut off and, and peace. Um, and I would say, like I said, even though it's not, it's not necessarily because I want to sleep and, you know, lay down, it's just my my quiet. It's just where I know that I'm just taking a moment to get to shut off. Right? right. Because I think a lot of us feel like we don't have the opportunity to because of our jobs and because of the chores, whether I'm in my, cause if I'm in my kitchen, do I love to cook? And do I, is, is my second place or maybe my favorite place, the kitchen, just because I love to eat and cook. Yeah, absolutely. But that's also something that we have to do, right? When we're in our room, there's nothing that we have to do other than just be at peace. Mm. Yeah, I love that. I think it's important to create sacred space within your mm -hmm. home. And, you know, when you found that space, it allows you to rejuvenate, right? Because yeah. we definitely are, are programmed in this world to go, go, go. Mm -hmm. um, but it's in those still times that really allow us to reset, rejuvenate, and really just have the energy to right. move into the next phase of what we're doing. So I love that. I love that that's your space. And that is that is such a cool thing. Um, and as you know, our theme for this uh, season of the podcast is creating freedom in your life. So in what ways are you creating freedom these days? Yeah. So I think the freedom for me is my mentality, right? My new mentality, my new feeling of grace, my new feeling of, hey, we all have a story, right? And, and that's another reason why I love that word grace is because every single person walking this earth has a story in some way, shape or form. And so in that, like, that is where grace becomes so important to give people grace, right. And give ourselves grace. Cause we all know we've been through a story and the, to me, the freedom is having that mentality. It's not my freedom of time. Sure. It's great. I could you know, I, I work in sales. I essentially make my own schedule. Yes, I do have freedom with my time, but I think the mental freedom is the most important freedom that we could have because that unlocks the ability or the opportunities for everything else that takes up our time. Right. So, um, I still am working on it every day. I'm not saying I'm absolutely perfect with my mental freedom. I mean, there are still things that I get wrapped into and question and, and try to decide on every day. But again, that, that word grace gives me the freedom, right? Um, understanding that everyone has a story and giving those people grace gives me freedom, freedom to not get angry as easily freedom to not, to not get annoyed as easily or so upset so easily. 
um, or freedom to be happier towards them, even though some people may not see them as delightful, right? So all of that to me is, is freedom. It's just that mental freedom. Love it. So, so important. Well, I know our listeners are going to want to stay in contact with you. How can they best do that, Chelsea? Yeah. So um, I'm happy, obviously, to answer any questions, anything through email, um, my Instagram. I love for you guys to you know see my Instagram. It's my first um, initial last name. So Cline88. Um, share that with you. And, you know, as we come in contact, if you guys want to take it a step further and be in personal contact, I'd be happy to do that over the phone and whatnot. But um, either on social media, you'll get to see more of my story, more of my journey. I have a, you know, I was on another podcast that was in full detail of the accident. If you want to learn more about that. Um, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm always here. I think that's another reason why I survived, right? I, it is to share the story. It's to share it with others and it's to make an impact on other people's lives. Sure. I've, realized how to change my own, right? But if there's one person in this world that I could help or motivate or inspire or talk through a difficult time with, I, I'm here for that. So perfect. So great. Well, thank you so much for your bravery, your grace, sharing your time with us here today. I know that there's that one person out there that um, really needed to hear this today, you know, because as Chelsea talked about, we all have a story. It's how we orientate ourselves towards it. It's what we do with that, that launches us into our greatness and to really be in it. So until we connect again, live your spa life. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye everyone.